This is section 9.4, comparison of series. So uh, in our continuing increasing number of tests for convergence of, or divergence of series, we now move to two more tests um, to add to the ones we already know. And we're going to today talk about the comparison tests. Um, so for all the convergence tests that we've talked about so far, um, the terms have to be a fairly simple term and the series have to have special characteristics like um, for the integral test, for example, we had to have a positive continuous and decreasing function. Um, a slight deviation from those characteristics like something that's not strictly geometric or 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 a strictly a p series we might have to figure out how we can find the convergence or divergence and we're going to have to know which um, ones we're comparing to um, so Let's look at, uh, on that next page, the direct comparison test. There are three good examples of what I'm trying to convey. Although 1 over 2 to the n, which is 1 half to the nth, it's geometric, n over 2 to the nth is not. Um, 1 over n cubed is a p-series, but 1 over n cubed plus 1 is not. You notice they're kind of related. They're very similar, but it's not purely geometric, not purely p-series, so you can't treat it exactly that way. And um, the n over n squared plus 3 quantity squared is easy to integrate using u substitution, where u is n squared plus or x squared plus 3. Uh, x squared over x squared plus 3 quantity squared would not be something that we could integrate easily. So what we're going to be doing is comparing these ones that are slightly altered to the easy ones that we've already figured out how to work with. So looking at theorem 9.12, um, and by the way, for these tests, we're only going to work with positive terms, or it could be zero, I suppose, but um, the terms in the series can't be negative. Let's put it that way. Um, and that's going to be true for several of these um, tests. So this is kind of a condition that lets you enter the uh, comparison tests. All right, so for direct comparison, um, if the uh, sigma of b sub n converges, then um, the a sub n series converges also. Oh, I'll just put converges. No, also converges. That's good. I like that. So what does that mean? Well, graphically, I guess, is a good way to, to look at this. Um, all the terms of the a sub n series, I'm going to graph those in red. So let me kind of indicate that red is going to be this one. All the terms in that series are less than or equal to the b sub n ones. So I'm going to do b sub n in green. And let's say they look like this. And of course, it could be equal to, so I'll make one of them equal to. Whoops, that dot. Well, darn it. Um, the n values are the same ends, so they should line up vertically with each other. Uh, so let's just say it looks like this. Um, and, and this is the, the a sub n or b sub n axis, and, and this is the n axis. So, v 
visually, um, if the greater values that you're adding together converge, and they're all positive, or, or at least uh, not negative, if you were to add up all the red answers, they're definitely smaller values. If the green one converges, then the red one would have to converge as well. So that's the first statement. And so what we'll, um, what we'll do is we'll set up a comparison between the series we're looking at, a sub n in this case, and um, we'll find a series that's close to that that we know how to deal with easily, and that'll be our b sub n, and we'll establish that sigma b sub n converges or diverges, which is the next one I'm about to talk about. But uh, anyway, let's say it converges. Then if we set up that a sub n is always less than or equal to b sub n, and that b sub n converges, that implies by direct comparison that a sub n also converges. Okay. Now the second one is, and, and they're going to switch roles here, I believe. Um, so, oops, I forgot to write if. My bad. If um, the series for a sub n diverges, then the series for b sub n also diverges. So again, look at the picture. So the a sub n is still the smaller of the two. Um, if a sub n adds up to uh, something that's going to make it diverge, then if you have bigger numbers added together, that's going to have to diverge as well. So in this case, the second case, a sub n will be the, the um, I forgot to write f up here. I just realized. I'm sorry. I'm, I, I must be easily distractible. <laughs> I'm like a, oh, what kind of fish was that? And Finding Nemo. Oh, well, I won't think of it. Um, easily distractible. So in this case, the second case, a sub n will be the one that we know, and b sub n will be the one that we are trying to, to find out about. So um, I tend to um, use a sub n as the given problem, and b sub n, which is the one that's nice that I'm used to. So um, I, one of these will be backwards from how I normally do it, but that's okay. Uh, if you understand graphically what I just said, that's the important part. And of course, the um, conclusions. So we'll do several uh, practice problems like this so that you can get a handle on it. So the first example I'd like to look at is uh, the series sigma equals 1 to infinity of 1 over 2 plus 3 to the nth. Okay. Well, um, so our a sub n, this is one I usually call the, the given one, is that expression. And certainly that's positive because starting with 1, any power of 3 is positive, and so that whole expression would have to be positive. Um, and like I said, that's kind of the entry into uh, comparison tests, is um, that you have to have only positive uh, term members, or, or it could be 0. Uh, I, the reason I'm leaving out zero sometimes is because it's very rarely zero. So it, it's not one of those things that happens enough to make me think about it. All right. So um, now our series resembles one that we do know something about. It resembles the series 1 over 3 to the n. 
which of course is, do you notice I'm not writing n equals 1 to infinity every time? Um, it's that shortcut I told you about a long time ago that people do. Uh, so I'm, I'm employing that now. That's the same thing as 1 third to the nth. And um, I'm going to call that one that I'm comparing it to b sub n. So, um, and all of the terms of that are also always positive uh, for all n. So, like I said, these, this is kind of the entry into the comparison test. It's both series uh, expressions you're wanting to talk about um, have to have positive terms. Okay, so at any rate, um, in looking at this series uh, for b sub n, it's geometric because it's in the form sigma of a times r to the nth. a is positive 1. It's an understood 1 that's multiplied by that. And r is 1 third. And since the absolute value of this r is less than 1. Um, our uh, B sub n series converges. Oh, and I left out one little thing. Um, well, I, I think I should write it. Um, because it is kind of important. So let me say this. Um, R can't be zero for this to work because if you have a, a, an original number uh, like five and then multiply it by zero to get the next term, it'll be zero plus zero plus zero plus zero plus zero plus zero. And um, so if it's not really um, geometric in that case and so I'm going to say that um, a little bit more carefully here that it needs to be a positive value for R excuse me pins messing up there we go so I'm going to amend that statement that we had earlier to this um, I think if you just say absolute value of r is less than 1, you're generally pretty correct. But uh, if I'm not mistaken, this is the notation that we're going to see when we summarize at the end of the chapter. Um, so um, I'm going to go ahead and throw that in there like that. All right. So we've established that our series that's really simple compared that is a lot like um, the one that we were given. Now what we have to do is, starting with the series that's given, which is 1 over 2 plus 3 to the n, or the general term of that series, I should say. I want to compare that directly to b sub n. Now I know what I need it to be, um, but I'm not going to jump to... Uh, saying that it's that just because I want it to be, uh, it actually has to be true. If you look at these two fractions, they're very close to each other. The difference is that the fraction on the left has a bigger denominator by 2, and if you divide by a bigger number, the answer is smaller. So bigger denominator on the left the one on the left. Okay, And so that less than relationship says that all of the terms of our series that we're trying to work with will be terms that are smaller than uh, the geometric one that converges. And so um, we can say, therefore, because we know that b sub n converges and all the terms of a sub n are smaller than b sub n, then we can conclude, therefore, that the series we're working with 
and probably at least once in this problem, maybe in the conclusion, I ought to be a little bit more careful with that notation from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over 2 plus 3 to the n also converges. Now have I said the name of the test? Uh, I may have said it, but have I uh, written it for this problem? No, I have not. So this test is called direct comparison. So we directly compare a sub n and b sub n and we establish pin is still messing up. That didn't look good, so let me write it. Um, I'm sorry, I was in the middle of a thought and got distracted again. Uh, sorry about that. Um, by directly comparing a sub n to b sub n and establishing that all the terms of a sub n are smaller than the terms that create a convergent series, which we had to establish up here and with the test that it was geometric and r was one-third and all that stuff, we determined its convergence and the terms of our series are smaller than that um, terms of the convergent series and by direct comparison then uh, our series converges, the one that we're working on. Okay, so let's go to the next thing. Um, so let's look at this one now. n equals 1 to infinity n over 2n cubed plus 1. All right. So our a sub n, and like I said earlier, I always make a sub n the given one and b sub n the one that we're comparing it to. Uh, that doesn't agree always with one of those two statements will be backwards from the way I, I'm thinking about it. But that's okay. Uh, as long as we're consistent, uh, I think we're good. So if you use positive numbers for n, uh, this expression is definitely always positive uh, for all n. You can also say for n greater than or equal to 1 because those are the only n that count anyway. Um, then uh, typically what I do next is I try to find uh, an easy one that's relatable to this one. Um, and a lot of times it's not going to be just super evident. I may have to do a little bit of algebraic uh, thinking here. So one of the clues I want to give you is that if you have a constant added to a, an n, when n is really, really big, adding 1 to 2n cubed is not going to change 2n cubed by very much. So one of the tricks that we'll do is strip away constants. I'm going to strip away that 1. Okay. And then by stripping that away, what's the comparison between these two fractions? Well, the fraction on the left has a bigger denominator, so it's a smaller fraction. Okay, that's something we're going to see a lot of, so you probably ought to get used to that. Then, that constant multiplication by 2 really doesn't have that big of an effect when n is super big. So, um, I'm going to strip away that scalar, that multiplier, 2. Now again, the fraction on the left side this time, with the 2 in the denominator, is a bigger denominator, which means it's a smaller fraction. And that is less than or equal to 1 over n squared. That's just simplification. So that is what I'm going to compare to. That's going to be my b sub n. So this time I, I needed to figure out what b sub n was, so it took me a little bit of, of effort to get there. So now let's look at sigma of b sub n. Um, it is a p-series, 1 over n to the number p. So um, identify what p is. 
then we can say since P is what? What is the comparison here that we're looking for? Yes, it's greater than 1. Is it greater than or equal to? No, it's not. So be careful. This is just P greater than 1. Um, since P is greater than 1, that means that this series that we're dealing with does what? Yes, it converges. All right. Converges. So, um, with those two statements, um, I've said by that series of inequalities that we, and what that series of inequalities implies is that the first thing, because of all those less thans, is less than or equal to um, the second thing. Oh, and by the way, we, I forgot to say, b sub n is also always positive for all n. I mean, it's greater than or equal to 1. All right, so we've established that inequality relationship. And if b sub n converges, and the terms of a sub n are always smaller than that convergent series, that means, therefore, that sigma of a sub n, which is our original problem, ah, darn it. also converges. And what test did we use? Direct comparison. Again, don't make up your own abbreviations for things because I won't know what you mean. And unless I introduce an abbreviation, I'd really like for you to write the words out. Um, that also lets me check your spelling which is always interesting, especially for things like, or words like hyperbola or ellipse. I would imagine how many solar eclipses people talk about um, when they're trying to talk about an ellipse. It's amazing. All right, so let's do the next one. Sigma n equals one to infinity of n minus one over n multiplied by 4 to the nth. Okay, so let's see. Our a sub n is going to be n minus 1 over n times 4 to the nth. It's just the general term that's given is what I'm going to call a sub n. And uh, except for 1 itself, which gives us an answer of 0, um, Everything else in this will always be positive. So um, oops, I forgot to write what I was saying, um, which is positive for n greater than 1. And remember, the first few terms of a series not behaving well is no big deal. So that's fine. Now, to establish what b sub n will be, Start with your a sub n, and we're going to start taking things out that don't matter that much. Like that constant minus 1, let's take that away, because when n's really big, it's insignificant. Insignificant, get it? I'm sorry, bad pun. I am a dad. Okay, so this time, it's the numerator that changes. The numerator on the left is smaller than that's kind of like 6, six seventeenths compared to 12 seventeenths. The one on the left has a smaller numerator, so it's a smaller value. Bigger denominator makes the fraction smaller. Smaller numerator also makes the fraction smaller. Okay, then um, it's safe to say that this is... Uh, less than or equal to 1 over 4 to the nth. 
um, which is the same thing as one fourth to the nth. And that's going to be my b sub n. All right, so now we have to establish whether or not that series b sub n is convergent or divergent. So one fourth to the nth is geometric. R is one fourth. A is an understood one. If we need that, we've got it. Um, and since the absolute value of R is between 0 and 1, sigma of B sub n converges. And if all the terms of a sub n are smaller than all the terms of b sub n, which is what that line up above means, um, then therefore we can say that the series that we started with n equals 1 to infinity of n minus 1 over n times 4 to the nth also converges. And what test? Right, by direct comparison. All right. Now, um, if this had been instead um, the series n equals 1 to infinity of n plus 1 or n plus anything actually over n to the 4 to the nth um, after doing that work, we could strip away the 1 and da, da, da. So a sub n would be less than or equal to b sub n. Wouldn't it? Or would it? Hold on. Let's think about that. Maybe I shouldn't jump to conclusions. I'm afraid that's what some of you might do. <laughs> so don't do that. Um, a sub n would be this. And if I strip away that 1, Now the numerator on the left is bigger. Bigger numerator of a fraction makes a bigger fraction. We get this to be one fourth to the nth. I'm just saving a little bit of the writing that we did earlier, which would be our b sub n. And b sub n still converges. It's geometric as we showed above. But these terms a sub n are bigger than those. So if they're bigger, we don't know if they converge or diverge. We can't draw any conclusions. So in that case, we can't use direct comparison. Direct comparison will not work. The only way it works is if a sub n compares correctly to b sub n um, for the result we're looking for. So we got to be really, really careful that we don't jump to conclusions that we have the inequality that we need. That last example is not the inequality we need to show that that one converges. So although it um, looks like you might be able to use direct comparison, you can't. So that's what's going to lead us to the other comparison test. Um, so you always try in these types that are kind of close to one of our nice uh, geometric or p-series tests that we know how to deal with easily. Um, if it doesn't have the right direction of the inequality, like this last example, uh, greater than doesn't work for us, 
then we're going to use something called the limit comparison test instead. You always want to try a direct comparison first because it is a little bit easier and algebraically less challenging than the limit comparison test. So in this particular example that we just did, limit comparison is going to be um, the only way that we can do it. So first of all, um, for limit comparison, again, you have only positive terms. Okay, I'm only dealing with positive terms. Um, and if you were to make a ratio of those two expressions and find the limit as n approaches infinity of the ratio of a to the a sub n over b sub n and get an answer L that is finite, that is not infinite, it's an actual real number, and positive. And so this is the test, kind of like when you say the absolute value of r is between 0 and 1, or p is greater than 1, or whatever. Um, this is the test, is that the limit that you get has to be finite and positive. So that's what we're going to have to be checking for, is to see if that number we get is finite and positive. Um, then, if that all is true, then um, the a sub n series and the b sub n series agree with what they um, do. So they'll either both converge or both diverge. So this will be another one where we establish the convergence of uh, a simple one that is comparable to the um, given one. And it's generally going to be a, a geometric or a p-series that we're comparing to. Those are the two biggies in this. So we establish the convergence or divergence of that comparison one, um, the simple one. And then we do this limit of a sub n over b sub n as n approaches infinity, get an answer, and if it's finite and positive, then which whatever the easy one did, the, uh, the one we're working on will do the same thing. So if, if our easy one converges and we have that positive and finite L, then so will the other one. And also that's true if, if it diverges, the other one diverges too. All right, so let's uh, look at kind of a general looking problem. You may have seen this in your homework before, um, where if you have an A or a B or a C, those are generally constants, not variables. Um, here N is a variable because N is changing from one to infinity. So you can infer that A and B here are constants. We just don't know their values except uh, we are going to say that a is positive and b is positive to get this going. So um, this is really close to 1 over n, so um, I think that's what I'm going to compare it to. So a sub n is going to be 1 over positive number times n, which is positive, plus positive. So you might, um, this, this a here uh, isn't the same a as that, so maybe I should change letters. Yeah, uh, sorry about that, but it's, uh, it's confusing when you have a playing two different roles. It's the name of the general term and it's a constant. Ah, I don't like that. So I'm gonna 
change this to instead of B, I'm sorry, instead of A sub N, I'm going to call it C sub N. It won't change the, the nature of what we do. We just won't call it what we normally do. And uh, I think it's clear that C sub N will give you positive answers because A and B are positive. Um, so I'm going to compare that. If I took away the B and took away the A, um, let's try and do direct comparison first. Um, so if we took away the B, this would be 1 over AN. The denominator on the left is bigger, so it makes the fraction smaller. Then if I take away the A, um, if A is positive, um, A times N is bigger than N. And so bigger denominator, denominator means smaller fraction. And that's going to be equal to, normally I call that uh, b sub n, but I want to call it d sub n because b is that constant in this particular problem. So um, if we look at sigma of b sub n, that is sigma of 1 over n, that's the harmonic series. And we proved earlier that that diverges. So we're not going to have to do anything to prove that it diverges. We can just say it is so. Like that. If you, if you know the name of a series, and it is that series, and you know that that series does one thing like converge or diverge always, you can just make that statement once it's been proven. All right, so we can just say that. We could also, by the way, argue by virtue of the P-series test that it diverges because um, in that case uh, p is equal to 1 which is a divergent situation or we could even go to the integral test which is how we started and proved that thing but nevertheless we're just going to allow you to say that so if we have divergent turn oops I wrote b out of habit man 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 it's bad to have some habits because when they change the letters on you, you got to be consistent. And I was not consistent that time. So there we go. So um, if our D sub n series diverges and our C sub n terms are smaller than all of the terms for D sub n, well, um, I don't know anything about C sub n. It could converge or diverge. I have no idea because its terms being smaller, I, I just have no clue. So we cannot use direct comparison, as I said earlier. Um, so that would be maybe your first thought. Maybe you would not have written that much of it down. You can maybe do a little bit of that in your head and kind of think it through and then go, oh, darn, my inequality is going the wrong way. I can't use direct comparison. So um, because our terms... Uh, are positive. We can enter the comparison test. Tests, both of them. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go to the limit comparison test. And so um, we're going to take the one that was given, 1 over a n plus b, divided by the one we're comparing it to, 1 over n, and of course you know that to divide fractions you can multiply by the reciprocal and that's going to be come n over a n plus b and um, what's that this is a type of problem that you're going to see a lot of and I am going to let you get away in just a second with just looking at it and going oh well that's just 1 over a um, and you'll just be able to do that. Let me prove to you why you can do that here. Um, so that whenever you see one that looks sort of like that, uh, you'll be able to just jump to a conclusion like that. Um, so let's say that this were a function of x instead. Actually, I don't need to do that. I don't have to go with x. It'll work with n. So I'm not going to use L'Hopital's rule. I'm going to be a little bit smarter today. Um, I could 
multiply by 1 over n over itself as a form of 1 and simplify and I'll get 1 over a plus b over n and as n goes to infinity the fraction b over n goes to 0 so that goes to 1 over a because a is a constant 1 over a plus 0 is 1 over a so in other words um, because they're both n to the first as the highest power of n in both places numerator and denominator you end up getting the ratio of the leading coefficients uh, the coefficient in the numerator is 1 1 times n over a times n the coefficient in the denominator is a so it becomes 1 over a if it's really simple like that you could prove it like I just did every time I guess if you do it every time that's fine but if it's that simple, and you'll see me do this a lot as we go through, um, you're just going to see those and you just go, okay, I know what that is, and, and write it down, and I am okay with that. Now, um, what do we do with this limit answer? Well, remember the test is once you find a limit, as long as it's finite and positive, we're good to go. So, since a is given to be positive, 1 over a positive number is positive, not 1, is positive, that is it's greater than 0. There we go. And that statement right there, greater than 0, tells me you've thought about the fact that it's finite and positive. By the way, if you get infinity, that's not finite, and so it'll um, not work out this test would be inconclusive. If, if this limit of a sub n over b sub n in, approaches infinity is anything other than a finite and positive number, that test is not going to work. It's inconclusive. You need to do something else. So um, that, that test fails if, if you get infinity. Um, but anyway, 1 over a constant a as long as a is a real number, will be a real number, a finite value, that's positive because a is positive. So therefore, um, we can conclude, because that limit answer is a finite positive answer, we can conclude that the series we were given, from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over a n plus b, Also, when we get that positive finite answer, it means that the series we've been testing does the same thing that the simple one that we're comparing it to does. And what was the comparison here to? Well, it was to the 1 over n, the harmonic series. And since we know that the harmonic series diverges, then that means that our series for this problem also diverges. All right. So... Um, look at the next page. I've got a, a bunch of text there. So if you have a messy algebraic uh, series, um, limit comparison test works well for comparing these messy algebraic series to a p-series. In choosing an appropriate p-series, you must choose one with an nth term of the same magnitude as the nth term of the given series. So, for example, look at the given series, 1 over 3n squared minus 4n plus 5. As we did earlier, we could strip away the plus 5, and actually the minus 4n compared to the n squared is sort of insignificant. So the highest power of n is the most influential. And if you strip everything else off, you're comparing it to 1 over n squared, which is a p-series. Um, and because that p-series converges, they both converge. And, and I'm not going through the whole thing. Um, I'm not showing you the, the test here. I'm just saying so that you can identify them, how to start. Um, 1 over square root of 3 and minus 2. If you take away the minus 2 and the 3, you're comparing to 1 over square root of n, which is 1 over n to the 1 half, and that's a p-series that diverges. It ends up that that one uh, works out so that they both diverge. 
and n squared basically over n to the fifth. If you take away all the constants and lower powers of n, uh, n squared over n to the fifth reduces to 1 over n cubed, which is a p series where p is 3 and it converges and it ends up that they both converge. So we're basically disregarding everything but the highest power of n in both the numerator and denominator and any coefficients on those. So like that 4 into the fifth, the 4 you can just strip away as well. So on the next page, here are some things that might help you. The following prin principles are helpful, I think. Constant terms in the denominator can usually be deleted and it will not affect the divergence or convergence of the series. If a polynomial with a power of k appears in the denominator, you can usually delete all but the highest power term of the polynomial without affecting the convergence or the divergence. Like we took away that n cubed in that last example. Just strip that away. The divergence or convergence of a series is not dependent on the first several terms. So you can safely ignore the first few terms and test the remainder of the series for convergence or divergence. We talked about that earlier, so I just wanted to remind you that, that that's something I said earlier. All right, so let's uh, do two examples here and uh, we'll be finished with this section. All right, so sigma of n equal one to infinity, one over the square root of n squared plus one. And just for the sake of, of argument, um, even if we could do these by direct comparison, I don't want to because I want us to practice um, the limit comparison test. So uh, anyway, the series that we're given, I'm always going to call that a sub n unless a is a variable, I mean a constant in the problem like we saw that before. So it's just kind of an always thing. And our b sub n that we're going to use strips away that plus 1. And simplifying, that's 1 over n. Um, both a sub n and b sub n have positive values. So that means we're eligible for the comparison tests. So sigma of b sub n is the one that's supposed to be easy to do. Sigma of 1 over n is a harmonic series and we know it diverges. So just invoking the name harmonic series uh, means that you can go ahead and just claim, oh we know that that one diverges and go on with life. So, after you've established your b sub n and whether it converges or diverges, then you do the limit comparison test by doing the limit of a sub n over b sub n as n goes to infinity. Okay, so uh, to divide fractions, and there are going to be a lot of division by fraction things, so go ahead and get used to this. To divide fractions, you multiply by the reciprocal. And so the fraction 1 over the square root of n squared plus 1, there's an invisible 1 up there I haven't written there, times n over 1 will make this n over the square root of n squared plus 1. So I'm going to multiply by a form of 1 that is the um, highest power of n in the denominator, which is square root of n squared. I'm going to multiply by 1 in the form of its reciprocal, the reciprocal of that highest power of n in the denominator over itself. Now I'm going to leave it in radical form in the denominator. But the square root of n squared, as long as n is positive, and of course it's 1 or bigger, it will be, uh, square root of n squared simplifies to be 1 over n. So I need the radical on the bottom to do the radical uh, multiplication, but I don't really need the radical in the numerator. It's kind of in the way if we do that. 
So uh, n times 1 over n is 1. Um, distributing that uh, n squared in the denominator under the radical, that'll be n squared over n squared, which is 1, plus 1 over n squared. And as n goes to infinity, um, that fraction 1 over n squared goes to 0. So this goes to 1 over the square root of 1 plus 0, which is 1. And that is a positive and finite number. And we need to say that by saying greater than 0. Then we can draw our conclusion that therefore the series we were asked to work on, from n equals 1 to infinity, of 1 over the square root of n squared plus 1 also does what? Well, it does the same thing because we got that positive and finite answer. It does the same thing that we compared it to. Since we compared it to the harmonic series and the harmonic series diverges, then our series also diverges. Um, oops. What did I not say on this one? What test did I use? By limit comparison. If you're doing a comparison test and you do a limit as part of the process, that's the limit comparison test. I believe that I just ran out of room and I'm not going to be able to do the last example here. Um, I do want to go up here and uh, say one thing that I forgot to say. When we were doing this problem, 1 over a n plus b, I forgot to tell you the name of the test I used. So please make sure that you write the name of the test at least once in your problem. That was by limit comparison. So I, I definitely want to write that name. So if I forgot somewhere else, shame on me. Um, I deduct some points for myself because I didn't do what I said to do. All right, so anyway, I'm going to have to open up another one to um, complete the very last example.